All right, guys, if you're anything like me, you've done a load and you uh, just weren't completely sure um, how to secure it legally, you're probably sure of how to secure it where, you know, it, it's secure in your eyes, but as far as DOT's eyes, you might not know. And a concrete pipe is one of those big time, um, it's not a one size fits all thing. Each load can be different. And this book right here, will, will uh, really help you out on it. It's just hard to navigate um, all the rules and understand what they mean, especially for people like me who just, I'm not very good at reading comprehension. Some of these words in here, I have to look up to see exactly what they mean. Don't let that intimidate you. Um, you can figure it out, but I'll help you guys out with a few of these guidelines, at least as far as I interpret them. And this load I'm gonna show you, I'm not saying it's my load, it could be somebody else's. So we're just going to look at it and I'll just explain some, a few things from it. So as far as where to find all the rules in your uh, FMCSA regulation book, you want to turn to, uh, at least on mine, it's on page 518 and it's section 393 dot one two four what are the rules for securing concrete pipe i'll just kind of go through this broadly i don't want to go through the whole thing the rules in this section apply to the transportation of concrete pipe on flatbed trailers and vehicles and low boy trailers concrete pipe bundled tightly together into a single rigid article that has no tendency to roll and concrete pipe loaded in a sided vehicle or container must be secured in accordance with the provisions of 393.100 through 393.114. Section B, general specifications for tie downs. The aggregate working load limit of all tie downs on any group of pipes must not be less than half the total weight of all the pipes in the group. Um, that just kind of, that's a kind of just a good rule for all your loads. Just make sure you have, you know, a good number of straps and chains on it. You got a full load, you know, good rule of thumb is probably about nine straps, at least if they can secure the entire load down. Mine, it's chains and straps. Section two, a transverse tie down through a pipe on an upper tier or over longitudinal, yeah, longitudinal tie downs is considered to secure all those pipes beneath on which that tie down causes pressure. So what it's saying is if you have chains that run over the whole load, like, like on this one, that one and that one, that secure it down, that hold it down firmly to where none of these pieces have gaps in them, they all gotta have no gaps, then you can have two tie downs over it like that. A lot of guys will have cables, but if you don't have a cable, you gotta run two chains. So that's what they mean when they say longi longitudinal. That's uh, the ones that go, that go over the load. And then the ones that go through the pipe um, are ones like, you know, ones like this. So the next one is blocking. Uh, blocking may be one or more pieces placed symmetrically about the center of a pipe. One piece must extend at least half the distance from the center to each end of the pipe. And two pieces must be placed on the opposite side one at each end of the pipe, meaning you just have to have a, a board that goes, you know, across the back side of your load, and you want one that's on the front side of your load. And this is a separate group, so you got the same for this. You got one on the front, there's one on the back. And then, of course, blocking must be placed firmly against the pipe and must be secured to prevent it, uh, to prevent it moving out from under the pipe. Timber block must have dimensions of at least 10 by 15 centimeters or four by six. I have never seen anybody use a four by six. This load right here has got four by fours. That's what people usually use. Who's, who's carrying around four by sixes? But anyway, that's what it says. Technically, should probably have a four by six. And then they definitely have to be secured. You can see this one is secured with some screws. You don't want them coming out, especially on the back one, because if that one comes loose, then it's going to come off of the trailer. So now we're getting into the nitty gritty here. Arranging the load, pipe of different diameter. If pipe of more than one diameter are loaded on a vehicle, groups must be formed that consist of pipe of only one size, and each group must be separately secured. So what that means, 
this load right here this is 12 inch pipe this pipe right here is 24 inch pipe a lot of people would be tempted to just go ahead and throw this pipe on top of that but you can't do that they have to be they have to be separately secured you can't have a pipe with different dimensions in the same group and the reason for that is, is if this pipe was up here then there would be gaps between them so they want everything to be tight they don't want any gaps and then this one I, i'm going to tell you right now i don't really understand it uh, the bottom tier must be arranged to cover the full length of the vehicle or as a partial tier in one group or two groups obviously if this covered the entire length of the trailer this would have to go on top so i really don't understand that but anyway if you understand that you might get back with me you might comment let me know so section three arranging an upper tier pipe must be placed only in the wells formed by adjacent pipes in the tier beneath a third or higher tier must not be started unless all wells in the tier beneath are filled so what that's saying is the pipe that goes in the second tier has to be in these wells right here i mean that's pretty obvious and if you are going to start a third tier that third tier cannot start until all of the second um, tier is complete so say if you have all this is loaded on here and then you got this one pipe right here and you got this spot available you have to put it right here you can't throw it up on the th of the third tier you have to fill all available spots once that's done you can start loading on the third tier and then we got arranging the top tier the top tier must be arranged as a complete tier partial tier in one group or a partial tier in two groups that's pretty obvious the the top tier is just going to depend on how much you have left so let's say if you have this is 11 on the bottom 10 on the top say if you have three left um, you would probably want to put them in the center of the load don't put them on one end put them right in the center now this next section it doesn't apply to me it's uh, about arranging bell pipe we're not going to go into bell pipe because this is not bell pipe i'll tell you what bell pipe is because i had to look it up so you see how on this pipe it's just it's just uh, the same diameter all the way across well bell pipe would have a flange right here so this piece can fit over the next one and in the case of bell pipe they have to alternate so you would have you would have uh i believe this is the the male end on the bottom you would have the female end on the top they have to alternate for some reason but that's for another day guys uh this isn't bell pipe okay so this section right here is really important securing pipe with an inside diameter up to 45 inches uh this is 12 inch that's that's uh 24 inch stabilizing the bottom tier the bottom tier must be immobilized longitudinally at each end by blocking which we already went over vehicle end structure stakes a lock pipe and loader or other equivalent means okay so we use blocks but you can also use stakes we don't have a pipe pipe un, um, unloader okay other pipe in the bottom tier may also be held in place by blocks and or wedges eh, that's just up to you but um, the ends have to be blocked every pipe in the bottom tier must also be held firmly in contact with the adjacent pipe by tie downs through the front and rear pipes so that's very important for each for each group there has to be for the front and rear there has to be tie downs so bam we, there's a tie down right there there's a tie down right there because that one technically is at the front too and then you go to the back same thing tie down in the rear bottom and top and then you go back up to the front where the 12 inch ones are at tie down in the back tie down in the front at least one tie down through the front pipe of the bottom tier must run at an angle not more than 45 degrees with the hor horizontal whenever practicable at least one tie down through the rear pipe of the bottom tier must run forward at an angle not more than 45 degrees with the horizontal whenever pra uh, practicable i guess i'm saying that right so all that means is you can't have more than a 45 degree angle with the strap so this one right here 
you know that's like a 30 degree you can't have it you can't like you couldn't have it like this that'd be too much but it is saying that you do have to pull it towards the load so you don't want to have this going this way that's going to pull it the wrong way you want to pull it towards the group so the front goes towards the back and the back goes towards the front see how that is that way it's pulling it all together okay so now we're on use of tie downs each pipe may be secured individually with tie downs through the pipe if each pipe is not secured individually with the tie down then okay so what that's saying is you can secure um, each one of these groups with individual tie downs you don't have to use chains or a cable to go over the entire load so like this group right here this group of six pipe could be secured with just a strap through each one of these and it would be good and uh, same thing for this you'd have to run straps through every single one of those pipe that's uh that's a lot of strapping okay so what this is saying is if you don't have each one strapped individually which uh if you got a bunch of little pipe that's going to be a pain then here's what you do either a one half inch diameter chain or wire rope can go over that entire load or two three eighths inch diameter chain or wire rope must be placed longitudinally over the group of pipes plus one transverse tie down must be used every 10 feet of load uh, length the transverse tie downs may be placed through a pipe or over both longitudinal tie downs between the two pipes on the top tier so what that's saying is if you have if you have straps you can do straps every 10 feet and if you do that then you have to use chains or um, a wire rope to go over the load too so that's what I did I got these straps and it, as long as you have them every 10 feet and then I got 3 8 chain which means I have to use two chains um, if you have half inch all you gotta do is use one but as far as 3 8 you gotta use two and you can't use 5 16 that's too small and when you secure the pipe what I do I run the strap through the pipe that's what most people do but it's also saying you can run it through the crack up there and run it over, you know, your chain or your wire rope. You can run it. I've never seen anybody do that, but apparently you can do that. I don't like that idea, but uh, I guess that's an option because that's what it says in the book. But that's, I'm not doing that. If the first pipe of a group in the tier, in the top tier is not placed in the first well formed by pipes at the front of the tier beneath it, at the, at the front of the tier beneath, it must be secured by an additional tie down that runs rearward at an angle not more than 45 degrees uh, to horizontal whenever practical. This tie down must either pass through the front pipe of the upper tier or outside it and over both longitudinal tie downs. And then you go to the next page and it says pretty much the same thing um, for the back if you have one on the back like that too. And then the next section is securing pipe with um, an inside diameter over 45 inches. So we're done because our pipe isn't that big. But what that last section meant was if you have a pipe that goes, see mine, mine goes to the front, but if they say if this pipe right here was back here somewhere, it would have to be secured by a strap. Technically, I don't have to secure this one. Legally speaking, all I have to do is secure this one and then run the chain over it. I don't like that though. There's nothing wrong with using too many straps. All right, so hopefully that covers everything. I know that's a lot. I'm talking kind of fast cause uh, my battery's about dead. But hopefully this helps some of you guys out and any of you guys that haul this stuff all the time, um, you chime in, let me know if I got something wrong on here cause you know, I'll, I'll own up to it if, I, if something's wrong, if I'm not saying something right, it happens. Just let me know. Don't be a smart ass about it though, but you know, you can let me know. Ask me any questions if you have any guys, and I'll let you know.